giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everybody in the fun universe, and welcome to the show where the tea is sweeter and the bots are hotter than the Florida sun. It's the Sweet Tea Southeast Region Show. Now to introduce ourselves, my name is John. And I'm Griffin. Tonight, we're going to be bringing you a shallow dive into the inner workings of a team from the Southeast Region of the U.S. And tonight, we have a few special guests with us from FRC Team 4451 Robots Garage. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? John, go ahead. Uh, I'm J I'm also John, but I'm John Betger from 4451. I'm a senior, a programmer, and driver for their team. Hi, I'm uh, David Allred. I'm the uh, lead lead mentor of the technical side and a uh, uh, robot drive coach. Awesome. So before we get started tonight, we have a special giveaway for our live viewers from Analog Devices. Why don't we have our producer Tyler come on and tell you a little bit about that? Yeah, John, once again, our friends at Analog Devices are back with that incredible EDIS 16470 IMU. Say that five times, you might win. Uh, but once again, they got a lot of really cool stuff. It is off-season technically now, guys. Uh, so if you're interested in getting some cool tech, uh, the test out and try out, just see how it works, this is a great opportunity to do so. We'll have a keyword later on during the show. Don't forget, subscribers get five times luck. Join Fund Nation and get all the sweet benefits, of course, keeping us loud, live, and independent. And we'll give away that keyword later on during the show. Well, uh, I'm really excited to have you guys on the show for yeah. anybody in the audience exactly. that really cares. I actually used to kind of work behind the scenes with Robots Garage back in the early days. I got their lead mentor gave me an internship, and it was a really good opportunity uh, at Bosch, which is one of the primary sponsors of the team. So why don't we kick things off? How does your team start off the season? Once you've seen the game animation, you've read all the rules, and how does your team decide what to do next and what prototypes and ideas to pursue? Well, as you said, the first most important thing that we do is we always get in the game manual and read all the rules first thing before we talk about anything because we want to know exactly what, are, what we can do and what we cannot do because if we get that wrong, then we cost ourselves time down the road before, or when we get to the prototyping stage and we just, when we decide how we build our robot. But the first thing we do after we read the rules is that we go over like the specific goals that we want to accomplish. So we don't even go over any like design, anything we want to build. We just talk about things we want to do. So that might be, for example, in our autonomous, we might want to move for five points or shoot a certain number of balls. Or you might say, hey, we want to shoot in the high port. We want to be able to turn the color wheel, just basic game functions that we decide we want to do before any design or anything. Yeah, and then on the on the prototyping side, I I will choose who, uh, well, what what to go after. Um, we try to limit the things we chase. So, like for instance, this year um, we went with uh, shooting from decided to shoot from ten to twenty feet, uh, and not shoot up against the wall, so we could use a fixed position shooter. And then uh, kind of a happy accident when we were uh, testing the the shooter, we could shoot from thirty five feet behind the uh, wheel of fortune. Wow. That's pretty with insane. the same with the same hood. That's a pretty big distance right there. Now, is there an overarching philosophy your team uses like year in and year out, not just 2020 specific, I would say, which guides the decisions you make in designing and programming your robot? And what were your specific main goals for this year's challenge? Okay. Uh, the philosophy is kind of kind of what uh, 2056 uses, which is kind of robust and simple. Um, like for instance, last year in our first qualification match, we fell. Uh, you know, we broke a we broke a clip, kept on trucking. So uh, it needs to be robust because this game gets gets vicious. And and so we we tend to be simple with our designs. And, and then the the key is is the automation side. Uh, John, would you like to take over for that? Yeah. So our main goal for this season is we wanted to make it to Einstein's because we've made it to worlds 
a bunch of different times, and we always seem to falter out in the semifinals of our division. So we wanted to, this year, I felt like we really wanted to break that barrier and finally get to Einstein's and win that division. So some of the smaller goals that we decided we wanted to do for our robot to get to that big goal is that uh, the first thing we did is that we wanted to have a turret this year because we felt that one of the major things that we have to fight, especially in last year's competition, Deep Space, was defense. So we thought if we had a turret, it would be a lot easier. And th a lot of this was motivated by 254 because we saw how good their uh, turret base worked well for them. So we thought that we wanted to employ that same strategy so that we could, even if we were defended and even if we were a high value target at regionals, we could deal with that. So we also wanted to do things like auto was a big deal this year because we felt that if we went to, when we went to the local regionals, if we could score a lot in auto and take advantage of that and also score a lot in end game, we could win matches regardless of what happened in tele -op. So big points in auto, big points in end game to secure the match before we start. So that way we can, even if we come to some really difficult matches, we can pull them through. Yeah, yeah so it's Tyler showing, uh, I guess that's our, yeah, it's our sixth ball we took to, oh, nope, that's actually our eight ball. Yep. So that's the uh, eight ball auto we, we were queuing up for Smokey. We only had a six ball auto at um, Palmetto. Sweet. You got one, Griffin? All right. So my first question is similar to what, uh, similar to the question about your robot designs, but it, is there a guiding philosophy that your team uses year and year to year when planning outreach events? Um, not well. We we basically make our outreach based on our STEM camp that we have for middle schoolers, and so we're up to about. Uh, I think last year's STEM camp was 120 students, uh, middle right. schoolers, and our and our um, uh, students uh, do the outreach program. They're the mentors, if you will, of the of the middle school students. Uh, this year we were going to do, um, and probably we haven't figured out how we're going to do it yet. Uh, but we were going to do the um, uh, kind of a kit in in a lunchbox. So maybe a STEM in a kit. Interesting. That, that's what our, and then we have other other outreach events we do. We we are a, a very strong community team. That's what we build around, uh, and a good a really good industrial uh, uh, school partnership. Very cool. So to shift back a little bit more towards the shop and what you guys do to build your robot, what manufacturing capabilities is your team, and how do you train your students to take advantage of those capabilities? Well, we've got a we've got a bevy, and that's and it's not any of mine. I'm, they only let me use um, uh, an Allen wrench, but we have. Uh, <laughs> there's there's reasons for that. Uh, so we we have um, uh, uh, mills, lays, uh, bandsaw, jigsaw, uh, 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 a CNC machine. We have uh, 3D printers, so we have quite a bit. Uh, also, at the school system now, they have a, a, a plasma cutter that we were going to start using. We have we didn't use much of it this year, but we were um, um, leaning leaning towards that maybe for one component. Now, how we teach them, we we have lots of machinists on our team, uh, and then some student leadership as they learn how to use the machines. They'll they'll teach the the new students how to use the mills and the lays. Interesting, interesting. All righty then. Um, and you guys, uh, you yeah, that's, look that's like a picture. That's a picture of a, our our uh, hopper, hopper, hopper and tower prototype. So we we prototype with uh, Bosch extrusion and plastic, and yeah. there's a little piece of cardboard in there um, uh, as a kicker. Dave, I, I just want to uh, compliment your team for uh, teammates actually wearing safety glasses in photography. We don't see that too often. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we uh, we are working. This this shop is in our uh, sponsor's uh, manufacturing plant. It is an apprentice shop in a live manufacturing building. Um, we're trying to teach the students how to work. Not just, we're not really trying to teach people how to engineer. We're trying to teach them how to work, how to talk with people that might hire you. Uh, and so a lot of our students that come out of this program go right into the Bosch apprenticeship program. Um, this year we had um, a total of nine students come back as mentors on our team or, or part-time mentors for our team and our sister team, uh, 63, 66 Ramrods. Uh, so we are pretty serious about training our students and then they train, uh, train the other students. 
Yeah, I can definitely attest to that pipeline that you guys have built. It's probably one of the most impressive ones of any team in the Southeast that I'm aware of uh, for helping students find work after their time in first, um, for sure. Uh, so really quick, uh, what I'd like to do right now is uh, to get our keyword out for tonight's ADI drawing. Um, if you're interested in that ADI sensor, tonight's keyword is going to be robots, capital R-O-B-O-T-Z, robots with a Z at the end. So if you're interested in winning that analog sensor tonight, type that in the chat and it might be your lucky day. <laughs> All right, Griffin, why don't you take us away with our next one? All right, so... In the state of South Carolina, there have been previous rumors about a possible switch to districts, possibly merging with North Carolina or forming their own. What is your team's opinion on South Carolina switching to a district model? Would you prefer the merge with North Carolina or your own independent district? Go ahead, John. Uh, I would say we feel like uh, the regional format's nice because we get to see a lot of uh, teams that are not just in South Carolina, but a lot of great out-of-state teams, too, which... Uh, adds a great level of competition to see some of these great teams like Stipulse that came down to our Palmetto Regional and uh, Cyber Tribe comes down from Tennessee. I think I would like to see some uh, combination of North and South Carolina district because there's not too terribly too many teams in South Carolina and it would be nice to get uh, I'll definitely have a lot more teams in South Carolina but I think for the time being I think it would be nice to have a joint uh, South Carolina North Carolina district and we would be happy and ready and excited to compete in those districts yeah, yeah there are, yeah sorry there there are uh, uh probably three or four district events in north carolina that are actually closer than our home regional <laughs> yeah yeah distance is a uh, a problem when you live in the south <laughs> nothing is close <laughs> yeah. together at all yeah not not not, not at all um uh, definitely <sighs> So to talk a little bit more about the event that you guys got fortunate uh, as one of the teams that actually got to compete this year, talk me a little bit about Palmetto and what it took to prepare for it. Palmetto since, gosh, well, how many years now? It's typically been a week one event. And what is your team? what did the timetables your teams follow to make it possible to be ready to compete at that first event? Go ahead and start, John. Yeah. So the main thing that we uh, focus on is that we want to have – a robot ready to four weeks in. We want to have our pretty much our entire robot with a few maybe uh, kinks or leftovers to finish done by week four so that we have time to practice and be ready to compete week one. And this year we kind of got, we got pushed back a little bit because we had some problems. So we ended up finishing about week six or so. So we ended up having not as much drive time as we really wanted to. And we didn't have time to test some of the components. And we've had to, we had some issues before week one at Palmetto. But um, uh, yeah, basically just uh, for, be done in four weeks and just have time to practice before our week one event so that we're ready to go. Yeah. So so practice is is uh, as the drive coach uh, is the most important thing. You just finish something, you could drive it, play the robot you got, not the robot you wanted. Um, so if you get to practice, uh, that's that's the key. So this year. Um, uh, John, you saw in some of our pictures that we were we were going back to the school. The school was so gracious in donating a uh, an old shop as our build space. We're not well, it's not build space, but practice space. So we have an almost full practice build at the school now, and we've never had that before. So um, we want to get uh, we want to be able to use that as an outreach for other teams in the upstate uh, in, in the upcoming years without the bags. Yeah, I, and. Uh... I've never had a full practice field in my own shop, but I can. I bet you really see the difference in being able to utilize that to help Absolutely. get your team better, more prepared. So uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about the teams that you got to play with, and was there anyone you wanted to play with uh, at the competition or maybe later on in the season that you didn't get the chance to compete with? Yeah, I'll uh, have that. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's start with um, probably our favorite team of all is um, – uh, um, Mars out of West Virginia, uh, Hall of Fame team, uh, big big time favorite team of ours. Um, we usually play against them. In fact, uh, last year uh, we uh, we uh, met them in the finals and won that one. This year they met us in the semifinals and won that match. So uh, we really seriously want to play with those guys. We were getting ready to go to Smokey and uh, they were going to Smokey as well. So we were hoping to get to pair up with them. Uh, we'd love that. 
Uh, but there's a lot of teams under the Real Hawk Dicks, uh, Cyber Tribe out of Tennessee. Um, uh, we we uh, played with Swamp out of uh, you know Florida in the past. Those those kind of teams we like we love to play with those guys. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so one of your signatures that people see at the competitions is your wonderful robot cart. Can you yeah. explain to me what the heck went into the design process of that? Okay. <laughs> So we, we use a very subtle imagery approach. Um, and, and very subtle. And so we, we did this our rookie season, right? So we come out blasting with um, uh, our, our full garage setup you see there on the left and then that robot cart we've had since the beginning. Now the, the um, garage has been rebuilt a couple of times uh, to make it a little bit lighter and better. But we wanted to come out uh, you know, and show this image. So the, the, the garage actually represents the foundation of our team. Our lead mentor, Mike Bryan, uh, his father had a garage where he used it to be a mentor to t uh, student or not students, <laughs> uh, kids in the neighborhood uh, to, to basically learn, learn auto mechanics. And so that philosophy is, is kind of what the team is built on. The imagery is, well, we're either going to bring it and bring it or, or we're going to be a uh, a flop, but we're going to look really good. No, that, that, that robot garage, it's, it's the image that I always associate with your team that it's legendary tier amongst Southern teams. When you see it at worlds, you know who you're going to visit. Uh, people, and yeah, people stop us to get our picture. Do you ever About get the chance times. to walk around inside the the pit and take a look at the different things you'll see on the wall? You guys have gotten like what Woody Flowers, Dean Kamen, all the different signatures and like yep. Chief Delphi quotes and memes and goodness. Oh yeah, it it <laughs> would take you a good hour to go through it all. Yeah, I, and it keeps expanding every time I see it. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> it keeps getting more more deep. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, all right. All right. So, or one of the big questions probably people have on their mind for every team today is, we're in uh, state of the nation with a pandemic. How are you keeping your team engaged with FIRST? I can take this. So uh, the major, uh, one of the major things we did this year, uh, communication-wise for our team, is we adopted a Discord server so that we could all keep in contact even when we couldn't meet at an actual meeting where if someone had a late night thought or something, they could just send it to the Discord and everyone can talk about it. And it really, I feel like it was a big step up in terms of how we were able to get stuff done. Because like when it comes to things like scouting and strategy, you don't necessarily have to meet up together. So we did a lot of that over Discord. But ever since uh, kind of Corona hit us and we had our season canceled, we've been able to keep in contact through Discord. And the major thing we've been uh, talking about is what can we take from this season and the lessons we've learned and apply it to next season? What, what are the lessons we learned this season uh, and how can we take it and make our team as a whole better? Yeah, I can definitely attest to Discord being a wonderful tool. Our team uses it too. And of course, First Updates now has our Discord. You see, we <laughs> plug that in the chat. You can join us on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Discord's a wonderful tool. And uh, for teams that get access to it, it's definitely a... Uh, a great way to keep the team uh, talking throughout the season and throughout times like these as well all right so next drum roll if i had a sound effect i'd play it here uh, tyler why don't you tell us who won that adi sensor tonight all right, well, apparently John wants a uh, uh, soundbite, so we'll, we'll get him that in just a moment. But once again, uh, robots with a Z, apparently the only way to spell it, uh, it was your keyword <laughs> to type in for it in order to win that uh, awesome analog uh, devices uh, thing in there. So let's go ahead and let's draw a winner for that. I'm sorry, John, my soundboard on my phone is not working right now. So. Uh, but Jack42405 is our winner and a subscriber. So you know what that means. Lots of rigged emotes in chat because we clearly rigged it for our subscribers to win. Uh, but congratulations, uh, Jack, on there. Here, I, here we go. Oh, it didn't even play. Now it's broken. All right. Well, never mind. My disappointment is immeasurable yeah. and my day is my ruined. Day is ruined. <laughs> oh. There we go. How's that? Oh, there we go. I think I heard it. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh, no. 
<laughs> now we just need Cotton Eye Joe to play. No, we don't. We don't have that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight, and of course, thanks to our guest from Team Forty Four Fifty One Robots Garage for joining us, and uh, thanks to everyone in the chat for hanging out with us. Don't forget that fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving us your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits here on Twitch, or by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or just by letting people in first know that this is the place to get information that your team needs don't forget to check us out on discord youtube facebook instagram twitter or of course right here live on twitch if you're watching our next show it's going to be mouth in the south on behalf of griffin myself our guests from 4451 and of course our producer tyler i'd like to thank you all for tuning in and thanks to all of our moderators in the chat see you next time right here on the sweet tea region recap show see you guys Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.